Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. This is Nijisa and today we're taking a look at my predictions for a Tekken 8 roster. So first of all, I want to say that I have a prediction that maybe the roster, th there's actually two different kind of prediction here, right? One is if the game has a very small base roster, right? Like let's say they have, I, I estimated this to be like around like 20 characters, right? 20 character base game, right? So I made, um, I, I I did a uh, six seventeen seventeen man uh, base game roster from the original characters, and let's say they add like four new characters, right? So it would be like a twenty one man roster, right? So if the game is that limited, I feel like these are the only characters. I'm not saying they are the only one, but I feel like these are the most likely ones to make the main roster, right? And of course, nobody wants nobody wants Kuma and nobody wants Jack, but they're gonna be in the game, right? So we just have to live with it. And then Jin Kazuya is already in the game. Uh, I feel like these three new characters, uh, download content new characters for Tekken Seven, they're probably gonna make base game and probably show off some um, storylines with them. That's just my guess. I put Lars Lee. And Alisa in here, primarily Lars and Alisa is very uh, story-driven characters. Been part of the game for only like since Tekken 6, but they're really popular. And Lee has been in the game for, you know, eternity. But uh, as I said, uh, Tekken 7 ending showed these three characters. And I feel like they're very likely to be in the game. And then Nina is also one of those characters that uh, is being shown a lot in the game. Uh, in the storyline, so I feel like she's more likely to be in the game as well. And then we have the very popular character, right? Like these characters, I feel like maybe you I don't know where Yoshimitsu stands on the popularity is, but he probably is quite popular. Um, but as far as super popular characters like King and Paul and Huaring, for sure these characters among uh, the regular players, I think Law might be the same way. They're extremely, extremely popular, right? And then I think from the female standpoint, I think Xiaoyu and Alisa, I mean, I'm, we're not even going to talk about Alisa because she's, like I said, story driven, but for sure Xiaoyu is very popular probably among most um, gamers, right? Casuals and pro, that's what I'm trying to say, right? Okay, so next, if the roster does open more slots and like, let's say, you know, they get closer to like 30 man roster, these are the ones I put next. And probably most likely in this uh, direction from left to right. I put Eddie because I feel like, you know, he was a very arguably um, likable character that uh, I felt like, uh, I remember a situation where Harada was being harassed about this character. So I feel like, I mean, he, of course he gets harassed with every character, but I feel like uh, Harada respond more better when uh, he was harassed by Eddie, uh, Eddie players, I guess. Uh, so I feel like he has the like most likely chance to get in the roster if this was a short roster, right? And then next, I put these characters in kind of pairs. So if you guys kind of figure this out, right? Like Tekken 5, even though uh, uh, Steve is a Tekken 4 character, I pair him up with this Tekken 5 group because I felt like, you know, um, if Asuka is going to be in the game, it's very likely that Fang and Lily is going to be in the game, right? And if they put two female characters in the game, I'm more likely to put more... It's more likely they're going to put more male characters, right? So that's why I feel like Steve definitely fills that role. And then if we go with the pair group again, I feel like recently, you know, um, Julia's definitely been very popular and can definitely just make the main roster... So that's why I put it there. And then I feel like if uh, there was a Tekken 3 character that can complement um, Julia, it definitely is going to be um, Brian, even though it doesn't seem to make sense. But yeah, and then uh, I feel like Anna's been, um, you know, she's been left out of the main roster in Tekken 7. I feel like she has a higher chance now possibly to be in the game just for storyline purposes but since she's dropped out of the storyline purposes I feel like her chances are slimmer so uh, chances are she might not even be in this group she's probably gonna be like you know where Ganryu is because if she, let me just say this if she doesn't make base game roster the likelihood of her making 
season's roster is very slim, primarily because of her popularity is very slow, uh, very small, right? Okay, with that added, um, I want to say that uh, obviously, uh, if I had to pick a counterpart for um, for Anna, it would be either Lei or Ganryu, and since Lei is far more popular than Ganryu. Lei would definitely take the piece because, you know, out of all the OG characters, Lei is the only one out of these group that is, like, you know, in the older game. And Anna is one of those two. Like, Anna is one of those characters that is from Tekken 1 and Lei is from, like, Tekken 2. So, you know, you got to kind of put um, OGs with OGs, right? Okay. With that said, if there was a Seasons 1, this is what I would suggest, right? Um, the only problem here is I have five characters. Um, obviously, Kunimitsu is extremely popular, right? Lately, right? Uh, since her release, she's been extremely popular. I feel like she definitely could make the season one roster or m the season two roster. But if uh, if they didn't need like the hype, if they don't need a hype, I feel like they would definitely put her down here and then maybe move Zafina up here, right? Something like that. But if they do need the hype. It would be vice versa, right? And I feel like it's uh, Dragnoth and Master Raven is like a matching pair, right? It's very likely they can release these two characters together. And same goes with Murdoch and uh, Armor King. Armor King, Murdoch. And then um, just to add a extra female character so that they will kind of balance the uh, male female um, roster a little bit as they've been doing in Tekken 7 after every season, you know? Um, I added Kunimitsu in here, but as I said before, if they didn't need the hype, I feel like it's very likely that Zafina can be there. Okay, and then this bottom half, this uh, tech, uh, Seasons 2, I feel like if they wanted to make a huge impact for Seasons 2, they would definitely need some hype characters, and those characters that can do it is the Tekken 6 character, right? And if the Tekken 6 character can't do it, then bring in some Tekken 7 characters with... I feel like these are the two most popular female slash male character that are in the game. I could be wrong, you know, maybe Shaheen might be pop more popular. Definitely, I feel Gigas is not as popular as um, Shaheen, but... Uh, Claudio, I feel like, is more popular. And then, same goes here. I feel like Josie is more popular than both of these. So, this will be how I look at it. And, you know, I feel like um, Ganryu still has a good chance of making it. And every of these characters has a good chance of making it. The only thing that I feel like it's like... I feel like these bigger character has a better chance because there's not that many big characters in the game and if they want to fill more of that big character slot they would probably add one of these two guys and then obviously all these characters i feel like it's not going to make it and then these two characters they're just the counterpart of these characters up here and they're more than likely going to make it devil jin I mean, he is his own slot. I feel like, obviously, he would make the game... He's already in the CG movie scene, but to have him as a character, I don't know yet, because considering that Jin does use uh, devil powers in his cinematic, you just never know. So, right, yeah. Um, that's uh, my take on it. What's your guys' opinion of it, man? And, uh, yeah, let's close it out right there, guys. Bye-bye.